Hello folks and welcome. So are you brand new to the Linux world? If you are and you're looking for information about which distribution or desktop you should download and uh, maybe this video might be for you because I'm going to make some recommendations for brand new users of Linux and then kind of for folks that are kind of in between talk about the different uh, distributions and desktops. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is uh, the two documents I have on my desktop. Uh, one is for the recommended for new users, brand new users of Linux, and then the different uh, desktops and distributions. And uh, before I get going, I just want to give quick, uh, quick uh, credit to the artist who created this wallpaper. Uh, the name is where I'm circling, and I believe I got this from wallpaperswide.com. My video will be more than two minutes, but uh, my videos always contain chapters and timelines and I'm filming in 1920 by 1080 today. New user document. So the data that I got from all of this stuff in these documents I got from distrowatch.com and I'll talk about that website in a little bit. So let me blow this up. So are you brand new to the world of Linux? If you are, you may want to try these different distributions. Linux Mint, Ubuntu, Linux Lite, Zorin, Elementary OS, PC Linux, Tuxedo OS or Ubuntu Mate. There are plenty more out there though. So these are currently rated as beginners on DistroWatch. Okay. Distributions versus desktop. Okay, so this is a distribution for instance, but they have more than one desktop. The desktop is what you interface with on the computer. So Mint has uh, four different desktops, two Cinnamon and one XFCE and one Mate, to give you one example. And I'll talk about those desktops in a second. But anyways, here's some examples of something to try for a brand new, brand new user. And these are rated, again, as beginners on DistroWatch. So let me close this document and open up desktops. So desktops are, you know, if you're kind of like, if you want to think about the Microsoft world, a uh, desktop would be like Windows XP to w Windows 10, that kind of thing. So in the Linux world, we have lots of different desktops also. And also depending on, some of them are considered lightweight and some of them are considered not so much. In other words, some are more taxing on your hardware and work on older computers. Well, the XFCE desktop is one of those. There's also other lightweight desktops available for Linux, but I'm only gonna talk about this one and a couple more. So lightweight works on older computers. Now the names that you see here, again you can always hit stop, pause, and fast forward and reverse. These are different distributions and each distribution, I'll just highlight the first name, can have more than one desktop on the distribution's website. And in a lot of cases they have uh, sometimes up to six or eight different desktops, including that XFCE for instance. But these are specifically the, di the distributions that contain the XFC desktop. I gathered this information from distrowatch.com. And the names are spelled exactly how they're listed on distrowatch.com. Okay, that's the XFCE desktop. I'll blow that up slightly. Moving downstairs, I'll back this out just a little bit. The KDE Plasma desktop not a lightweight desktop and in my book they are a little bit more taxing on your hardware. They, in other words they have a, they need a little bit more horsepower to run efficiently. How's that? But these are also uh, all of the different distributions that distribute the KDE Plasma on at least the data that's coming from um, distrowatch.com. I'll make this a little bit larger maybe and re-scroll. Again you can always back this up. And I also have, um, I'll make mention too when I get on their website, is there's also BSD and data included in here. Okay, it's not only specifically just Linux distros. All right, so this is the GNOME desktop, also very popular out there. Again, these are just different distros or distributions. And some of them have funny spelling names too. And a lot of these you can also find on my YouTube site as um, tours and overview videos if you're curious to see what they physically look like and some tips because I usually throw a tip or two in a lot of my videos. Okay. 
quite a few things in here. All right, so I'll scroll that one more time for the GNOME desktop, and then I'll skip the next page. This one is called the Cinnamon Desktop. Again, it's just another name or uh, desktop. And uh, the Cinnamon Desktop, I believe, was originally made by the Linux Mint team. But there are other Linux distributions that also offer the Cinnamon Desktop. You can see all the ones that are in here. I'm using the list here from the 1 to 100 on DistroWatch. You'll see that in a minute. So again, here's where the data came from as of May 11th. But there are definitely more desktops available on that website. I just showed you a couple of them. These are just different desktops. Now I'm going to close this and uh, head on over to the Penguin. And uh, first of all, let me close this and reopen this because I hadn't just opened on the second tab. So uh, before you run away and go, okay, this is not for me, I'm not a senior, can I just do the about for, a sec for just one second and point out the fact that Linux is for any age. I do encourage if you become a subscriber to read this and look in my community tab. I also have some links for you, which I'm about to talk about distrowatch.com. If you're using a standard web browser, you may have the link here in this window, or you can also do searches for keywords in here, by the way, if you're looking for specific videos on my YouTube site. Full details are in the community tab. Now I'm going to click DistroWatch. So DistroWatch, I'm not trying to promote their website. I think it's a great website for brand new users of Linux and also experienced users. It has a wealth of information on Linux and BSD. You can look for the distribution name and hit go. You can also scroll. Let me back this out. I know you won't be able to read the text, but I just wanted to let you see there's sections in here of different information and links. All the stuff in blue are links. So now I'm going to blow this back up and they do have commercials just like a, pretty much all websites nowadays. But the page rent, hit ranking area is here. It's done by different uh, section, but it defaults to last six months. And this is starting from one to 100. These are different distributions. There are more here when you click that more than a hundred more. The total distributions out there in the world, I think are over 600. There's also private Linux servers out there. Amazon uses them, um, Google uses them, even Microsoft uses them. Microsoft Azure uses their own custom version of Linux servers. But more importantly, we're talking desktops today. So the ranking part I don't focus too much on other than the links and I'll show you how to use this rather easily. So I'm going to click the MX one. Just keep in mind that the data that I gave earlier is based off 1 to 100 as of today's date. All right, So I'm going to go to this MX link and just give you some tips on how to read this thing. First I'll scale it back a little bit. So this is the name of the distribution and this is the current update or last update that they've done. Sometimes they'll match to what you have done over here, and sometimes they don't. So um, there's a, obviously an update has been done to something on 115 versus this is one, I'm sorry, 130 here. Sometimes it can be as simple as the installer, you know, the application that installs this. All right, so let me start with the lines on the top. So this is Linux OS. It's based off of Debian and NTX. NTX actually has a separate connector and uh, NTX is a different desktop. I'll even point to it right here as soon as the commercial loads. Skips around when you're doing that. Number 15. NTX has different desktops. Fluxbox, ISWM, and JWM. Live medium, old computers. That's the word I want you to focus in on when you're looking for something to test drive. So let's go back to that MX. So it has the word live medium. That means I can test drive any of these desktops. So if I were to refer back to which one of these desktops would I probably use on a 12 year old computer, I probably will start with the XFCE. It's more forgiven on the older hardware. The plasma requires a little bit more horsepower in my book. So probably if I have the time, I'd try both, of course. And I suggest you do the same. 
if you have the time, test it out on your machine. Just don't discount the, the desktop just because it, your computer is of age. Always try things. But I will tell you, plasma desktops in general, if you step over the 12-year-old mark, if your hardware is 12 years old, more than likely not going to run very well if it does install. All right, Linux OS, based off of Debian and NTX out of uh, Greece and the United States, three, three different desktops and only one screenshot. Typical screenshot. So a typical welcome screen from at least from MX would be you can install it here. And then I'll back this out and there's an, another icon that says installer right here. And uh, the particular um, panel bar, you know, your info bar uh, is vertical. Sometimes you'll see the panel bars in a horizontal position. Here's a typical menu for that one. And more importantly, the thing I'm gonna talk about uh, in a second or two is uh, make sure that your hardware works too if you have the live medium. That's a great opportunity to make sure your network card works, especially Wi-Fi and, uh, and also your graphics card before you install stuff. All right, so you have the basic information here. They have three, three desktops. They offer a live medium. It doesn't say the word beginner, but it's fairly easy to use but I'll show you the categories where it says beginner here in a minute. The respective home page. So this is a website is wonderful for that type of thing. You just click on distro watch and then you can click on the distribution on the, uh, the page rank, page hit ranking area. I knew I could say that. And then you can open this up and then go to their home page at mxlinux.org for instance. And it's got more information down here. A ton of information including, including this kind of stuff. And I would just use that discerningly. So let me click on one that says beginners on it. It's actually number three. All right, so Linux Mint um, offers three different desktops. If I had a 12 year old computer, I'd probably want to investigate XFCE, but I certainly wouldn't discount the Cinnamon desktop. I would give it a try though, to see if it runs. But a lot of times you can go on to the respective um, websites of the distributor for the distribution and look up the minimum specifications. You can also do that online. Okay, so three different desktops they offer here. And actually they have a two cinnamon desktops. There's an LMDE5 version also. This one actually grows with you too. It's kind of nice. It's a really nice desktop. Debian and Ubuntu based. You'll see a lot of those buzzwords. You'll also see Arch-based, LTS means long-term support. They're out of Ireland. Again, they have the categories beginner and live medium. So if you're brand, brand spanking new to Mint, or sorry, Linux, you may want to give Mint a try. There's another one in here too that I'll point out. So that has the word beginner, like number 12, Zorin. Zorin OS, beginners, live medium. XFC desktop and GNOME. My computer is 15 years old, I probably would test out that first. But certainly, if you have the time, download the other image also and test drive it. What do I mean by image? Well, anytime you go to these respective websites and you download a copy of this computer image to place the computer operating system on your machine, it downloads as normally as an ISO which can be burned onto a DVD and or USB stick. I'm not gonna cover that in this video. But you can certainly find information to do that or have a friend help you. Put that image on a DVD or USB, I'm sorry, a DVD or USB stick as a bootable copy so you can test drive it. This is where my conversation led in earlier. When I say test drive these things, Make sure that your network card works. Now, an example of the panel bar in here is I have, uh, this one's hardwired, but if you have a wireless symbol here, click on it. Make sure you can log into your wireless router, for instance. Get on the internet, because you're gonna need all that before you install these things. There's an install key right here. But before you install, whatever version of Linux you, you decide and choose, make sure that it works on your wireless card your graphics card, 
Those are important things. They're important things. What happens if you don't, if your wireless card doesn't work or you can't get out on the internet? Well, first of all, it's going to stop your install. But you've got some choices, um, you know, whether it's a laptop or, or, or a tower computer, you can always get a um, USB network card. You find those in a lot of electronic stores. Just look for something that works for Linux. That's important. That's important. You can always move to a different distribution too. See if they have different drivers to make sure that your network card works or Wi-Fi. Okay, so again, this one is out of um, the country of Ireland. It's uh, Debian Ubuntu based LTS is long-term support. And then I'll show you an Arch-based distribution. It's number two here. So Endeavor OS is really not made for beginners, but I think most people that have been running a computer for more than 10 years can figure out how to do this rather easily. This is a terminal-centric type of uh, desktop, or, uh, or I say distribution. What I mean by that is you're, you're going to be looking up information normally using a web browser and then using terminal to install the software using just a couple of key keywords to do the installation part. And then most of the software is graphical nowadays. So after you use the terminal or console, depending on which version of Linux you're using, this uses, looks like XFCE terminal, for instance. Once you use that to install the software, it appears in these menus. But I think most people can probably figure that out. It's got a graphical installer though. And some of these actually will have different ways to um, have different filing systems on there. Examples with the extension for or BTRFS, those kind of buzzwords. You can always look those up on the internet if you're not too sure how to format your particular um, hard drives and stuff. So on that note, folks, again, I have lots of videos on my YouTube site that are a tour and overview of a lot of these Linux distributions. Thank you for watching.